You're listening to English with Monty, the podcast about the English language. Today is 8 Minute English, talking about requests, offers, and invitations. Hi, this is English with Monty, and we're doing an 8 Minute episode. I've got Gideon on the show, and we're going to do things on modals because modals are popular. Hi, Gideon. Hello there, John. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Looking forward to this modal episode. Excellent. Could you take a message for me, please? Yes. We've started. We're into it already. That's a request. Huh? Oh, is it? Sorry, we're going to start off with requests. We're going to do requests, offers, invitations. If I say, could you take a message for me, please? What else could I say in terms of a request? Would you take a message for me? Yeah, sure. Can Is you that... take a message for me? Yeah, excellent. Will you take a message for me? Will you take a message for me? What would be the difference between could, would, can, and will? Are there any differences? And why do we have four different ways of asking for requests? I think one part is the level of politeness. Mm -hmm. I think could is slightly more formal. I don't know polite. They're all polite. But could is slightly more formal than can, mm -hmm. isn't it? And will strikes me as more demanding. Will you do this for me? I need the answer very soon. I would say so. I would say would as well. Would is a bit more polite, isn't it, than could? Would is a bit more polite, yeah. So could is a bit more polite than can, or a bit more formal, depends on how you look at it. And would is a bit more polite than will. It is, isn't it? Yeah, or so a will... A bit more formal. A bit more formal. So as you say, will is kind of more direct, isn't it? I guess can is somewhere in between in this case, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then if we move on to offers and invitations, I guess in this case we could do an offer with can or shall, or also you can make an offer with will. And then you can move on to offers and invitations. Then you move on to an invitation, which is like, would you like to come to my party tomorrow? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, let's go back to the offers. Shall we go back to the offers? <laughs> shall I explain? Yes, I think that's a good idea. You shall explain. Well, shall, but people mistakenly, well, some of my students mistakenly think that we never use shall. You can always, you will. No, there's always one exception. And this is the exception here. It's for offers. You must use shall. It wouldn't make any sense. If I say, shall I open the window? It's an offer for me to open the window because you're hot. Mm -hmm. Will I open the window? No, that makes no sense. Does that be a future? I don't know. Will you? So make shall for polite offers. Shall I do this for you? Shall I explain? So it is a polite offer, isn't it? Obviously, it can be used as a suggestion. Shall we go out? That's a shall we. So obviously, the offer in this case is Usually just with shall. an I, yeah. isn't it? Whereas mm -hmm. we're not covering the suggestion, but that would always be with we, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Will I open the window? That's like saying, well, will this happen? I mean, it's a strange thing to say, isn't it? So yeah. de definitely not interchangeable. Will I win the lottery? Yes. You would say you're you're asking a question about the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Well, shall then... I win the lottery? Okay, go ahead and win. <laughs> she uh, said, shall I win the lottery? It's, it's definitely more. Shall I, shall I buy you a lottery ticket? I could say. Mm, I would love offer. one. Maybe you could buy me 8 million lottery tickets. Okay, you still might lose, John. That's true. It depends how many you lottery bought them tickets. All. You bought them all but one. <laughs> and then... Yeah, that's the one that wins. Can I is obviously to make an offer. So can I help you? I guess you could also say, could I help you as well? That would be exactly the yeah. same, wouldn't it? Slightly more yeah. polite. May. Yeah, may I help you? Yeah, exactly. For offers. But you have to be careful with may because it's not always an offer. If I say, may I open the window? It's about me. It's not about you. If I say, shall I open the window? It's about you. It's not about me. So mm -hmm. you've got to think, may I? It's about me. Definitely. Except yeah. may I help you? Sure, if the word help is in it, then that's different. If helps but in it, it definitely makes a difference, doesn't it? May I have the weekend off, but you're asking for something. Mm -hmm. 
So that's not an offer. So it's not exactly the same as chat. You can't just replace it. We focused on questions, haven't we? But also mm-hmm. you can make an offer by making a statement, can't you? And often we say, if you like, at the end of it. So I can do that for you if you like. Okay. I could give you a lift to the station. I'll do that for you if you like. So you can use the future form in this context. And that wouldn't be strong, really, is it? That's true. You can put it at the beginning of the phrase as well, can't you? If you like, I'll um, give you a lift to the station. Exactly. In that context, it kind of changes, doesn't it? If it's not a yeah. question form, it certainly makes it softer and better on the ear, really, in terms of an offer. Yeah. And yeah, we've already spoken briefly about would you like? So yeah, would you like another drink? Would you like to come to my party? Mm-hmm. Apparently, this is an advanced thing. I didn't even realize. But you must or we must is a very polite invitation. You must go for a beer sometime. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Let's stand here on, you sent me a link to the uh, British Council. Mm -hmm. You gave an example of that. Yeah, that's interesting. I knew it. I didn't think about that, that we must is a polite suggestion. It is curious though, isn't it? I think nowadays we would see that as being something that wasn't really an invitation, wouldn't we? It was yeah. like, oh, we must meet again soon. It's like, okay, yeah, I know. You must come and see again. me next time you're in um, Paris. Which generally means don't come and see me. <laughs> no, not at all, no. But it is, that's a polite way, isn't it? A very polite way of saying, it, isn't it? Yeah, it is a very polite way, isn't it? But sometimes it can be, it can be disingenuous, can't it? In the sense that people will sometimes use it in order to just make small talk to try and be particularly polite i guess not me not you no i'm genuine in everything i say it's true it's absolutely true (laughs) but some people would i guess it's more of an old school phrase isn't that but it's true that i would use it i didn't even think about it but i do use that phrase Mm. we must meet again soon yes i do do use it it's a good phrase it's a nice phrase so it's not an obscure piece of english at the corner of the language only used rarely since the 17th century no not at all no so that means that you're not an obscure piece (laughs) either exactly so that's good news that was requests offers and invitations i must have you back on the show again gideon (laughs) thank you uh, with pleasure shall we do this again sometime we should definitely do it again yes yeah shall i give you a pay rise next time (laughs) yes double it to i don't know what's twice zero three cups of coffee yeah a flapjack okay it's a deal excellent i'm pleased to hear it thanks for joining me gideon you're welcome you've been listening to english with monty